Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is such a pleasure to have you watch today's video. I am Uem Akban. In today's video, I want to talk about God's commitment to you. The first question is, does God want you to be happy? The simple answer is yes, God wants you to be happy. The second question is what this video is about. Is God committed to your happiness? Now, the number one point is that God is not committed to your happiness. God is committed to your good. To be happy means a set of things has to happen the way you want it to happen for you to be happy. But if you say that God is committed to your happiness, it means that God is bound and obligated to make you happy. Which means anything that would make you happy that you desire, God will do it for you. But over this landscape of scripture, we have not seen that happen. So God is not committed to our happiness. God is committed to our good. Does God care for you? Yes, God cares for you. Does God want you well? Yes, God wants you well. Does God want you protected? Yes, he does. Does God want to provide for you? Yes, he does. Psalm 68 verse 19 says, Blessed be the Lord our God, the God of our salvation, who daily loads us with benefit, who daily bears our burden. And in the scriptures, in First Peter, it says that we should cast our care onto him because he does what? He cares for us. So this tells us that God is committed to our good. God wants us to be well. God wants us to be cared for because he cares for us, but he's not committed to our happiness. And most of the times, the things that are good for you may not make you happy at first. There are good relationships that God might have for you. And at first, it might not be, you know, that exciting at the starting like you want it to be. It may not be the picture you see in the movies in Hollywood or Nollywood or whichever wood you look at, right? It may not be in the movies like you see the happily ever after story, the way it starts. It may not be all those cheesy feelings. It might be a rough relationship that you get to have hard conversations, which are not easy to have. But then that is what God builds you to have a good relationship, not just an exciting relationship. Sometimes you go through a heartbreak, you experience a rejection, or you experience some set of bad things, in quotes, and you feel like maybe God doesn't care for me. But the truth is, God cares for you and he is committed to your good, but he is not committed to your happiness. Because at the beginning, the things that may happen in your life may not make you happy because it is not like the way you thought, it is not like the way you desired. And this video is for you to be encouraged and know so that you can align with the commitment of God for you. Does God care about you? Yes, he does. Is God committed to your good? That is why he has your best interest at heart. Now, let me pull out scripture. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we see the scripture says, And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. God causes all things, everything, not one thing, not two things, not three things, but every single thing that happens in your life, which means that every single detail in your life, God causes all of them to work together for your greater growth. So whatever you're going through in the meantime should not make you dejected and feel like God has left you alone or forsaken you or forgotten you because he promised not to. So you should believe him and take him at his word. Number two, God is not committed to please you, but God is committed to make you pleasing to him. This doesn't feel good to us as humans because we feel like if God loves me, he should be committed to please me. But God is not cool with everything you are cool with because even when you are in love with someone, they are not going to please you 100% because somehow the things you desire are not in line with the things they desire. And you both need to sit and iron things out like you desire this and I don't want the same thing. So let's have an agreement. So when it comes to your relationship with God, God loves you, yes. But he will not please you to do all you want. That is why scripture says that you should delight yourself in the Lord. Be soft to the Lord. Allow the Lord to direct you. And I love it the way the Passion Translation talks about it. Find your delight and true pleasure in Yahweh and he will give you what you desire the most. Give God the right to direct your life and as you trust him along the way, you will find he pulled it off perfectly. 
Now, God is the only one that can lead you to his purpose. And for him to lead you to his purpose, he will make you pleasing to him. Because his desire is to transform you, not to get you conformed to the world. Your desires are a build up of the things you've seen and the things you are exposed to. You cannot desire what you do not know. It's until you know something before as a human, you start desiring it. What I'm trying to say is that your environment plays a great role to what you get to desire. And God doesn't want to conform to your environment, but he wants you transformed and conformed to him. That is why he wants you in his word. He wants you studied up. He wants you to know him better so that you can be pleasing to him and his will you'll be fulfilled in your life. The third thing is that God is not committed to your ambitions, but God is committed to his purpose for your life. For everything works together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose, not your purpose. That is why sometimes disappointment would come because the things you desire are not in line with the things he has planned for you because some of your ambitions are not in line with the greater good that he has set up for you. Jesus went to the Father and said, Lord, let this cup pass by. Which is him literally saying, this is what I desire. I don't want to go through this. But then he submitted his will to the Father and said, not as I will, but your will be done. And the Father certainly wanted him to go through that. The Father said, well, you've already said, let my will be done. So, of course, it will be done. But what did Jesus do in that place? Hebrews chapter 12 tells us, he endured the cross. For what? The joy that was set ahead of him. And he despised the shame, disesteemed the shame that he was going through. And that is what I want you to learn in your life. Now, whatever thing you are going through, as long as you're working in purpose to the greater good that God has for you, disesteem the rejection, disesteem the shame, disesteem the reputation that people are putting on you, disesteem the labels that people are putting on you that are not the truth, this esteem, whatever thing is weighing you down and then move forward. Scripture says, let us look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I want you to know that God is committed to you being joyful. As much as he's not committed to your happiness, it is committed to giving you joy because the scripture says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. God is committed to giving you his shalom, his peace. And his peace is not the absence of trouble around you. His joy also is not the absence of issues around you. But it means you are delighted in knowing that God is your friend. You are delighted in knowing that you are not alone. His peace tells you that there is assurance for you. In life, God is committed to keep on loving you. To keep on showing you his kindness, his mercy, his compassion, his favor. So know that God is committed to you for your good. And let these thoughts be in your mind that God thinks precious thoughts about you. Psalm 139 talks about that. How precious and wonderful are your thoughts for me, O oh God. That even though I would want to count them, they are more than the grains of sand on the seashore, which is it's uncountable. And they are precious. So if God's thoughts for me are precious, God is committed to my good. And I'm settled with this. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope and I wish that this video will be a blessing to you. Thank you. and See you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.